Well, ladies and gentlemen, dear participants, we are finally <laughs> come to the end of the Congress. Uh, we have had the opportunity to learn a lot about different topics of great interest uh, for, all, for ourselves and our families. We, um, I hope you have been able to make new friends and to benefit by enriching yourselves with experiences of others. May, may everyone take home a big suitcase loaded with new ideas, with concerns, and lots of, of things to talk about and think about. And don't worry, they don't cause overweight on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of IFD, IFFD, I would like to thank all of you for coming from all corners of the world to this meeting. I know that it's not easy to leave uh, your home, your offices, your work, and, but we know that every effort you do to, to improve your marriage and your families, it's worthwhile, and it, it, it always is more beneficial than what you, you, you made to, to do it. So uh, right now, I want to ask Jorge Correa from Mexico. He's one of the leaders in, in family enrichment uh, in Mexico, and uh, he will read the, the declaration of this Congress that we are going to take to the UN, to the United Nations, in February 2020. So please, here he is. We, the parents attending the 20th World Congress of Family Enrichment, and the youth participating in the first World Congress of Personal Project in London, hailed as the United Nations approaches its 75th anniversary and the world celebrates the 13th anniversary of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. In continuation with the previous Congresses and the full activity of the International Federation for Family Development in 70 countries, together with other representatives of the civil society, agree on this declaration. We acknowledge the right of man and woman of full age to marry and to found a family, as described by Article 16 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And we express our appreciation for the different resolutions and decisions adopted on this issue by the United Nations General Assembly and other international bodies as guiding principles for, of our action. We emphasize that as basic and essential building blocks of societies, families have a crucial role in social development, bear the prim primary responsibility for nurturing, protection, education, and socialization of children, as well as instilling values of citizenship and belonging in the society. We reaffirm that family policies are a mainstay of national public policies and the most meaningful vehicle for governments to influence the living standards of upcoming generations. And that part of achieving the global ambitions of sustainable development agenda, family policies have an important part to, to role in meeting targets, targets across many of its goals. We consider the rights of parents to decide if they wish to stay at home and raise them for a longer period of time or return to the labor market as a basic principle of family policies. To this end, we especially recall the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development Target of recognizing and valuing on paid care and domestic work through the provision of public services, infrastructure and social protection policies and the promotion of shared responsibility within the household and the family. We express our gratitude to so many experts, practitioners and colleagues, officials, academics, lawmakers, and civil society representatives from all over the world who have collaborated with us during these past years through their contributions and their commitment to the well-being of society. We confirm our will to help families worldwide and to contribute to universal peace and respect of human rights through our courses and programs, as well as our advocacy work at the United Nations and other international institutions, 
and are grateful for all the work of thousands of volunteers who are committed to it around the world. And we address international organizations, governments, lawmakers, and civil society representatives with the following recommendations as appropriate. Number one, empower families and promote the integration of a family perspective at the national, regional, and international levels by removing social, political, legal, and economic barriers to their active participation in society, by enabling them to assert greater control over their resources and life choices, especially including decisions on investments in health, housing, and education, and by providing instruments to recognize the time, effort, and money that committed parents invest in their children. Number two. Focus poverty alleviation strategies on the family as a unit. Continue to promote inclusive and responsive family-oriented policies for poverty reduction to confront family poverty and social exclusion, recognizing the multidimensional aspects of poverty, focusing on inclusive and quality education and lifelong learning for all, health and well-being for all at all ages, full and productive employment, decent work, social security, livelihoods and social cohesion, including social protection systems and measures, such as child allowances for parents and pension benefits for older persons, and to ensure that the rights, capabilities, and responsibilities of all family members are respected. Number three, promote work-family balance as conducive to the well-being of children the achievement of gender equality, and the empowerment of all women and girls in Teralia through improved working conditions for workers with family responsibilities, flexible working arrangements, such as telecommuting, leave arrangements like parental leave, affordable, acce accessible, and good quality care, and initiatives to promote the equal sharing of household responsibilities, including on paid care work between men and women, and encourage the responsibility of fathers and their contribution of men to families, develop policies to address the impact of the absence of males on family well-being and promote active fatherhood. Number four, promote equitable access to different forms and modalities of parenting education as a tool to enhance children's well-being such as family enrichment courses, positive parenting classes, or mentoring programs, and facilitate intergenerational care and support, such as intergenerational living arrangements, and support from grandparents to, a better, to better promote social inclusion. Number five, develop active measures to support children and youth with sensitivity to family situations prevent violence, addiction, and juvenile delinquency, and promote early childhood development, school-to-work transitions, and young adults' economic security to facilitate family formation and stability, particularly among those with insecure socioeconomic resources. Number six, continue to develop research projects, support, and disseminate data collection on family issues, the impact of public policies on families, and the investment in family-oriented policies and programs design, implementation, and evaluation. Especially promote the Venice Declaration as an appropriate instrument to show that families are crucial development agents and that they need the environment provided by inclusive cities, especially in terms of investment in infrastructure. Number seven, in full coordination with the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, UNICEF and other civil society organizations promote the preparation for and the observance of the 30th anniversary of the International Year of the Family in 2024 as an opportunity to increase awareness of issues relating to families and knowledge of the social, economic, and demographic processes affecting them and the organization of events to communicate relevant findings and recommendations to all stakeholders. London, 20th of October, 2019. So, if you agree to this letter, please uh, show an applause.